Hello, I'm Jennifer Goodman with Good Life Realty, and I'm here today with Eric Gonzalez of Sago International. Eric, thanks so much for coming in to speak with us today. Thank you for having me. So let's get started. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where'd you grow up? Um, I was born in Mexico City, um, and uh, when I was 13, my family and my brothers and I, we moved to Austin, and we've been here ever since. So uh, it's been almost, uh, well, I think around 32 or 33 years. Wow. So what keeps you in Austin? Oh, we love Austin. What's not to like? The nature, uh, you know, the, the deer all around, the hills, the lakes, the laid back attitude. It's everything about it. Great quality of life. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about a couple things today. I want to talk about trends and innovation and, and just your brand mm -hmm. overall, if you will. So, in your opinion, right now, what is the newest innovation in home building? I think there's, uh, for obvious reasons, um, the sustainability aspect of our profession is what's guiding the innovations. You can't get away from it, can you? No, and you shouldn't because we have a responsibility to take care of, you know, our, our we're, surrounding, our yeah, Earth. we're stewards of this planet. Right. We've got to exactly. look after it. Mm -hmm. And w are you seeing any trends right now in modern architecture that you can share with us? Before I go deeper into this question, I'd like to kind of, my opinion, the word trend kind of implies a kind of a fashion, if you will. Mm. In my work, I try to kind of stay away from trends or mm -hmm. fashions. Uh, and kind of base my work on something more substantial. Having said that, um, uh, I think there's a new concept of what a home is. Mm. And, um, you know, today people do a lot more things in their home than they used to before. Mm -hmm. uh, namely, um, working out of their houses is one. Secondly, um, you know, in many instances, the children stay longer at home, which... Um, Good uh, or bad, they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that has shaped a little, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 con the concept of today's house, today's mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, people are more free and more open, and that's being reflected in the architecture. Tell me, Eric, what trends are you seeing right now in home design overall? The concept of the open plan, um, uh, more specifically the kitchen, dining, and living uh, relationship, mm -hmm. and added to that is the inner, uh, the connection with the outside, with the, the context. You're seeing something more uh, of what's happened in places like LA, where uh, the public space of the house mm -hmm. is not only bigger because you're joining those three spaces together but to that you're adding exterior public spaces of the house okay and how are how are you seeing that come to play now many you know many houses uh, being designed today embrace that concept um, with the big plan, doors big sliding glass doors um, uh, windows um, the oversized styles, windows, yeah. yeah. Uh, Want to tell us about the oversized windows? Go on that direction because you did a magnificent job on that house that we saw. Oh, so why don't you, you tell? Uh, you know, uh, um, multifold doors mm -hmm. or um, um, you know, bifold, bifold, or whatever they are. What are those? There what are those doors called? <laughs> well, there's different manufacturers. Yeah. But essentially, it's a it's a it's a moving wall system mm -hmm. that you know gets open, and so you have that full full connection with the with the yard, with exterior space. Mm -hmm. And you like to use those oversized windows. Absolutely. Yeah, they, they not only look cool, but they serve the purpose of, um, like I said, connecting those interior and exterior spaces. Absolutely. Eric, what trends are you seeing right now in kitchen design? Um, I think the kitchen is a very special room of the house. I think it's Today, it has become the heart of the house. Mm -hmm. And in, um, 
most of my work I, I provide for a big generous island as kind of the anchor for the kitchen. I think there's also been a, um, a, a big influence from like the Italian and German kitchen designers that has kind of trickled down into the very you know different levels of you know economy um, and you're seeing a lot of like high gloss kitchen cabinetry built-in um, uh, appliances refrigerators mm -hmm. and so forth uh, uh, and um, I'm also seeing that the the white countertop has become has kind of research and it's coming back whether it be in like quartz surfaces or different types of marbles and so forth those are a few items that i see in the kitchen yeah the marbles it's interesting to me that marble is making its way into the kitchen other than a backsplash because it's so porous what are they doing these days that's somehow different that uh yeah they're not doing anything i mean that's um Surely there are uh, ceilings that you can treat uh, those surfaces with, mm -hmm. but uh, inherently the marble is a poor surface, and you know it could uh, it could stain. Having said that, it's such a beautiful material that nothing's going to replicate the beauty, uh, no matter how you know how much uh, man-made materials try to emulate it. You spoke a little bit about. Um how rooms are being enveloped into one big space. Tell us a little bit about the trends and layouts. Yeah, I think everything is becoming more open. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mentioned the relationship between the kitchen, dining, and living space. I'm also seeing it more and more in uh, master suites. Mm. Like, for example, uh, in quite a few of my projects, I've joined the relationship between the master bedroom and the master bath. Um, I've pretty much eliminated kind of the doors between them, both of them. Mm -hmm. Similarly, um, the house is also being divided by kind of the master wing on one side and, and the children's and, and, and the other spaces on kind of a separate area. But sometimes those kitchen bedrooms also have a common area for for them to have their you know have their fun and have their space mm -hmm. themselves yeah let's go back to uh the bedroom because most people would think if you're losing a door you have an it's a, not so much privacy but you build in a very particular way because you allow for that privacy yeah absolutely of course you know water closet needs privacy and it's always provided uh, but it, it has to do with the layout of the of the the space. Uh, it's not like you're going to be seeing or hearing everything that happens in the bathroom. There's a partial separation, but mm -hmm. it's more open. Think of um, uh, suites and fancy, you know, uh, Four Seasons hotels and you know, in in Asia, if you will, where. The, 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 the tub is part of the suite. It's part of the whole experience of, mm -hmm. of um, what you do in the, in the bedroom. Got it. And in terms of materials that are being used, what are you seeing by way of innovative materials? I think um, uh, you are starting to see more and more materials in the residential sector of architecture than you would in the commercial, or that you have in the commercial in, in the past, such as exposed um, architectural concrete, mm -hmm. uh, exposed steel beams, even with their nuts and bolts, if you will, so that um, um, you see how the building is actually put together. Um, uh, natural materials like stucco, um, wood. So in short, kind of exposing the natural uh, um, uh, surfaces and materials. Do you have a signature style? I would describe my work as uh, modern, mm -hmm. uh, minimalist. However, I, 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 I purposely shy away from creating cold spaces. Mm -hmm. So modern and minimalist, but yet warm.
Yeah, well, and that's the materials that you're using in relation to each other that yeah. gives off that very warm feeling. Thank you, I think so. There needs to be a balance between that exposed steel beam and a place where you're gonna feel comfortable, you know, raising children and so forth. So you kind of balance that with wood and with uh, artwork on the walls. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It all works together. What would you say is not hot in a world of this is hot, this is not hot? What's not hot these days? Um, I would say it's definitely not hot to uh, design and build huge houses in general. I think there is a, a, a concerted effort to, um, um, to have quality over quantity. And I thought of another, another um, specific point where that is probably not hot right now. I would say bathtubs are not hot, whereas spacious, uh, uh, showers with all the bells and whistles would say are hot. Okay, so when you say that, so are you thinking like a shower built for two or you have the kids running around or? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, sh uh, shower stalls with, you know, multiple shower heads, mm -hmm. body sprays, whatnot. Glass. Absolutely, very open again. Got it, so very generous. Yes, Very generous space. Yes. Okay. Where do you see, and you see a lot of these things, especially from the vantage you have of your beautiful home, where do you see the future of new builds? Like I said, I think the trend is toward uh, uh, reducing the size mm -hmm. and having something much more impactful by the way of uh, the quality of the design, mm -hmm. quality of the finishes. Um, uh, sustainability is a big, big uh, concern, and that's driving uh, what is going to happen in the future with houses. What are you doing as far as sustainability goes? I begin with uh, how the how you know what the actual house, um, the shape of the house, uh, how it responds to the actual site to the existing trees, the topography, the light orientation. So I try, try to design a house that, that um, responds directly to those, all those points. And uh, with that, I, I study the, the light. Mm -hmm. uh, natural light is very important. Uh, but at the same time, you want to be mindful to uh, um, you know, reduce the heat gain. Um, mm -hmm. So I provide in addition to uh, you know, highly efficient windows, uh, foam insulation in the, all mm -hmm. the walls and the whole cavity of the ceiling, of the roof, um, uh, high efficiency um, uh, heat pumps, uh, on-demand water heaters. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, yeah. There, I guess there's so many things you can do now it then just becomes a question of what the site asks for. Because you've got it all at your fingertips. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the final product needs to be a, a direct result of the specificity of the site. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't build this house and expect it to work on this other site the same way as it does on this one. Mm -hmm. So because you take that orientation, you take the landscape, and you take sure. all of it into consideration before you even draw anything. Absolutely. That totally makes sense. You build new homes. What's the one thing you think that current homeowners could do to make their home more sustainable or eco-friendly at this point? I think one AC uh, and relatively inexpensive uh, uh, element that you can include yourself as a homeowner is um, um, put in a, a, a water harvesting system in your house. You know, we'll have roofs and mm -hmm. gutters and downspouts. Those could be, um, that good water can be directed into um, tanks that you can use for watering and uh, using it in other ways. Also, um, landscaping is an easy, mm. easy one as well. Um, the, the, the trend, again, 
I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, uh, using uh, native plants, mm -hmm. drought tolerant plants, I think is a win win for everyone. And they're not only uh, sustainable, but they're they're beautiful. Yeah. So consider consider that I guess what's around you, what is specific to our climate here. Absolutely. And plant those things, knowing that you're doing well sure. for the ground and erosion and anything else that yeah. Yeah. will allow the area to be better. Yeah, exactly. Great. I'm Jennifer Goodman with Good Life Realty, and I'm here today with Eric Gonzalez of Sago International. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.